Hello everybody, it's me the Boss Hog. Today I'd like to look at my buy, sells and dividends last week as well as a full portfolio walkthrough. Uh, the inspiration for my thumbnail and opener this week is, uh, you know, I saw this cute little seal. I did, I was looking for an appropriate meme, I couldn't find one and I pinched this idea from somebody else's. So I think he's adorable and I'm back into REITs in what I think is a big way at the moment and so let's talk about it. Uh, and did I mention he's really cute so that's got to be great for the algorithm, right? Anyway, let's do it. All right, so uh, a fairly odd week. Um, honestly, though, I'm pretty happy with it. The A small, about 0.4% gain. Um, the last couple of weeks have felt like we maybe have got some stability. Uh, personally, though, I'm not convinced that the nerves and the underlying concerns are really behind us. I'm just, again, doing the best that I can uh, with some uncertainty. Uh, it was also a little bit of an odd week because the US markets were closed on Monday and the UK markets closed on Thursday and Friday for respective holidays. In case anyone's wondering, the reason why the US P&L can still change on a Monday when it's closed is because that's basically FX movements, right? Like my spreadsheets in live time, the currency markets are still open. So basically that purely represents FX movements. I'm a British investor, so I set that into my spreadsheet and am impacted by that even when the market's closed. It changes my portfolio value, so it's reflected here. Whereas the UK being closed, I have no FX impact from that. So it's zero movement. So that's the uh, justification for that, for anyone who's wondering. A uh, significant amount of capital out added this week. <laughs> this is a slightly um, funny situation. I only meant to add 1600, but my second 800, it took a while to clear with my brokerage and also didn't show on my bank. So I just assumed like I'd closed the window too soon. It hadn't gone through. So I did another 800 and he then went through and I, both of them went through. So I ended up doing like, you know, 800 plus 1600. So uh, a bit silly, but that's fine. I just chucked it into stuff anyway. It looked fine. Uh, no trading this week to report. Definitely feeling like a uh, investor uh, rather than a trader at the moment. <clears throat> uh, there were three dividends this week, uh, although only two showing. And that's because Fever Tree issued both a special and a normal dividend. So it's about 110 was the special and then the rest was uh, the normal. So that felt great. Uh, as well as a pretty good one from legal in general, a uh, insurer that I really like. Oh, and for anyone who's not familiar, Fever Tree is a premium uh, drinks brand. Basically, it does the mixer for um, you know spirits. So uh, I really like it. And we'll talk more about them in a little bit as well. So that's the summary as it stands. Let's look at my buys. All right. So this week, I significantly increased my stake in uh, MPW. I've been wanting to get into REITs anyway. For me, this looks like and the steel, uh, it's forward FF, AFFO is, uh, you know, in the low teens, uh, according to Seeking Alpha. I really like Seeking Alpha for that. And by the way, for anyone who hasn't seen uh, ISA Investor's video this week, I recommend it. He uh, goes into that as well and explains uh, what's really meant by AFFO. Effectively, though, these are sort of um, income ratios for REITs. Uh, quite enjoy them. They strip out any of the kind of investments and uh, some maintenance, etc. that REITs will have. Uh, so it gives a much better underlying picture of their business. Um, and we can go from there. So I'll just summarize it here. Um, but there's a, a video that I'll link uh, that I recommend uh, if anyone wants to look at it. From my perspective, for MPW, it's trading below its sort of five year norms. It's got good yield, uh, very low AFFO, including among its peers. It is a healthcare REIT, so you know you have to factor that in. It's a specialist REIT rather than a general one. I like it though. It's got a reasonable balance sheet for a REIT. It's got good, powerful customers who I don't believe are in any risk, right? They're able to pass on pricing, both MPW and their customers, so that's good as well. It's also pretty well diversified. No single customer accounts for more than about 3% of their revenue, so no risk there. And they're also expanding internationally and already have a, you know, a hefty presence globally as well. So I like what I'm seeing. Um, a really strong yield at the moment as well. So, you know, again, I, I'm kind of accepting the fact that I'd like, uh, I do like a dividend. And to me, it just looks like very good value, basically. Now, in fairness, I didn't get the best buy price here. I got it around 18 flat. Uh, obviously, on, oh, I say obviously, uh, I saw it happen on Friday. You know, I, I was going out for some sort of UK Jubilee celebration, socializing, etc. Got back in the evening and it was like, you know, in the low 17s. Uh, to me, that's even more of a steal than it was, basically. I was pretty happy buying it for 18 really happy buying it toward the 17 and i will absolutely be looking to buy more mpw shares at these kind of prices <clears throat> i'm back into fever tree um, for anyone who hasn't seen it and again i'll link a uh, to my own video about fever tree i decided to sell out not so long after the last update i sort of thought like it was like a hold kind of level 
Uh, but then I decided that I could put my money elsewhere effectively. And I just felt like in a falling market, fever tree was starting to look expensive in the middle of the 1800s. So I sold out about 1840, more or less flat on my round two purchase into fever tree. Said that if it went under sort of 1528, I would consider that a buy because at that point it would have enough sort of upside um, and margin of safety for what I consider considerable execution risk from a still relatively young and in many ways naive company, despite the fact it's, uh, you know, a large company now, you know, multi-billion pound company. So at 15, 17, however, with my average here, I'm um, very happy to be back into Fever Tree. Not a huge position to open up with compared to what I've had in the past. And again, I probably would look to build a little bit more onto this, but keep it limited because it does have some risks. And I do still consider it very expensive. So you have to really believe in the basically everything I mentioned in that video. So, you know, international expansion, uh, off trade holding up. So the retail sales holding up and basically the um, the additional mixes outside of just gin continuing to grow. So that's mainly whiskey and tequila mixes. Uh, however, I do think it's a fantastic uh, product, great brand. And, you know, they, they've been held back for the last couple of years as they've done the international expansion. Obviously, a lot of um, pubs and restaurants have also been closed during that time. They've been impacted by freight costs. Now, however, they're building, you know, on things are starting to come online in terms of local logistics and bottling plants and things like that. So it will reduce their freight and mean that they can respond quicker to market. Uh, so we'll see how that shakes out. But for me, I feel really strongly about the brand. I drink it myself. Love it. Um, it's just a case of whether this is a good investment. And I think at these kind of levels, it is a good investment. Not without risk, though, uh, definitely. And definitely do your own research. But if you're bullish as I am, I think it's a, a good a good share to be in. Uh, so I'm back into DLR. I was into DLR in the very early days of my investing, but actually favored a company called Cyrus One. Uh, it was trading under Cone, C-O-N-E, uh, but it ended up going private. It got bought out. And, and to be fair, I made good money off of Cone. Um, but now I'm back into data center REITs. And for me, I wanted DLR under 139. At that level, it's a 20 AFFO, so not exactly a bargain, uh, but you know, back where it typically trades. It's, an, it's the second largest REIT after um, Equinix, uh, but I think it's better value. Um, and I, you know, again, I think we all know what a REIT is, right? At this stage, I think uh, data center REITs are a little bit different and a bit more premium than, you know, your, your healthcare REITs. Uh, and for me, I just, I don't think it's a bargain compared to the way I do with MPW. So I'm probably not going to build a massive stake in this, but I will follow it down and, you know, try and get my average down, uh, you know, in the lower 130s um and enjoy the you know the dividend and what i think is a relatively safe business i, I don't see data centers going anywhere so again happy with that and last but not least in terms of my uh shares i bought this week uh, a new position in kingfisher <clears throat> i was broadly aware of kingfisher and i actually looked at it about a year ago decided it was really expensive and still kind of wasn't certain that the turnaround plan that they had was really going to work since then however the share price has dropped a lot and also their trading update reassured me that actually their turnaround is really starting to work, especially their French business. They had sort of all kinds of supply chain issues, product issues, etc. That seems to really have uh, been worked through. I think a lot of credit to sort of newish management in there should uh, should go. Their sort of European operation looks good. UK and Irish operation looks good as well. This is definitely a value play. Uh, you know, if I looked at Home Depot or, or Lowe's, you know, th those are kind of more quality, I would say. Um, whereas this is more value uh, but you know trading below a 7 pe um, with a solid yield and an improving business seemed like uh seemed like good value basically so i don't expect to have a massive stake ever in kingfisher but for me i want to build it to like about 500 pounds so sort of about three times the size of what i've got right now maybe 200 shares something like that and then just kind of ride it up uh, I, I like i said I view it as a recovery we'll uh, we'll watch it for a year or two and make a decision at the end of it basically so I, I think kingfisher is still value it's had a little run-up after those results were very reassuring and i think it deserves a bit of a run-up uh, but it still doesn't look expensive to me so uh, i haven't touched my home depot position by the way i'm still very confident in that business um this is uh, a different a, a new position for a different reason different markets etc but similar -ish, uh you know they, they both do basically diy home improvements etc uh, but Kingfisher, like I say, value play, Home Depot, quality play. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the shares I bought this week. Uh, there's a bunch of additional things I'm averaging into as well, but I'm not going to touch on them for now. Just normal stuff. Anyway, let's have a look at what I've sold. All right. And I just said that because, um, you know, I'm so used to the format. 
Uh, but honestly, I didn't sell anything this week. I don't think I can recall a time when I didn't sell anything. I think it's probably a reflection of both my growth as an investor. I'm still relatively new to this at the end of the day. I think this is sort of going to be, you know, still less than 40 episodes of this stuff. Um, and, you know, I think it also reflects the fact I'm increasingly happy with my portfolio and how it looks. I don't need to sort of trade on a weekly basis and nothing really sort of jumped out to me as kind of a massive opportunity to be seized or, you know, something I wanted to exit quickly. So no sales this week. Uh, but as promised, let's have a look at my portfolio breakdown and uh, the top 10 this week. All right, so again, we're playing with this format a little bit. Um, last week, I did a deep dive into Home Depot. We're not going to do a deep dive this week, mainly because I spent the last 72 hours partying and drinking. So uh, there's definitely going to be none of that. Uh, however, I did think that I would be good to sort of talk about my portfolio. I've not done one of these for a while, especially because I haven't had the time to do a month end uh, video. Um, so we're going to have a look at doing this and see how this format works out, basically. So right now you're looking at every active position that I have, um, my holding in them uh, for both last week and this week, any trading that I've done. So buys and sells, obviously no sells this week, as I've already touched on, but you'll see the buys here. Hopefully, if my logic is correct in the background, this should match perfectly. Uh, then my plus and minus, um, you know, which is basically my week on week change, plus any trading, what that looks like. Um, and then the percentage change. What I've then done is sort of put my top 10 kind of deviations from zero, both positive and negative, uh, and then just a natural rest, right? So you can see the top 10 here, hopefully, and any notes that I've had a look at this. So <clears throat> kind of similar to how I was doing my top 10 beforehand, but this is based on top 10 movements during the week. So of course, there's gonna be strong correlation between that. I think it's good that I'm talking about my largest conviction plays a bit more, but this potentially gives a little bit more room for some of my medium-sized holdings. You know, if they have a particularly strong or weak week, 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 uh, to have a little bit of a conversation about them. So again, appreciate any feedback anyone wants to give me here, positive or negative. Uh, and all that aside, uh, let's just walk through these uh, nice and quickly. <clears throat> so Games Workshop had a solid week, I would say. I think it's been beaten up. I think it's uh, currently been trading at sort of 17 uh, PE, not forward PE, by the way, uh, just a existing PE. And I think for a company of this quality, that is uh, a good value. Um, I'm definitely pretty red on this at the moment, only about 10% at the moment. But again, I feel very confident on my holding here. It's one of my largest. They, I think really the bounce was the fact they had so many announcements at E3. Um, for me, I think it's not really dawned on people just the amount of content available within the Warhammer um, universe that they have like so many games they're really their licensing now is going to be it should start to really translate into the numbers i feel very positive about that presumably the market does as well and as far as i can tell um traders looks great and have been well received i will link to a consolidated article um, that i think is good and there's lots of traders on there as well for anyone who wants to watch it i think the space marine 2 trailer um, and it was more of kind of an update really got people very excited after the first trader, I don't know, about a year ago now, you know, just basically teasing with the um, development studio. But there's a lot of like passion in there that, again, if you're a fan, I think you can totally get behind. So very well received. And I think the market responded nicely here as well. <clears throat> uh, I do want to talk about Salesforce. So uh, I would say broadly positive results. And by that, really, the only caveat here was some margin pressure. Um, Almost analysts uh, were very um, consistent in their consensus, which was better than feared. I saw that so many times. I'll link to the article that I like the best. Uh, I think it's a good summary, uh, but it's basically going to be what I'm saying here, which is that other than the margins being a little bit under pressure, guidance was, you know, OK, not maybe super duper ambitious, but no surprises, really. And, you know, I think people were pleased at what's seen as a bit of a bellwether for stock and has maybe, I mean, it, it trades really expensive just because at the moment it's still really in growth, even though it's profitable, right? So it's, it's PE looks ridiculous. Um, but again, the earning is there for me. I think they've built out a great suite of products uh, or purchased really a great suite of products. And I still like what I'm seeing basically. So I was actually hoping that the results weren't going to be this good because I was going to use it as a chance to average down. I haven't bought any Salesforce, but I think it's a good hold uh, for me here, basically. So <clears throat> earnings were good, forward guidance was good, committed revenues were great, uh, and there was a lot to like. Uh, so that's the uh, summary there. Uh, next up, Medical Property Trust. Again, the article that really sort of reassured me uh, was Seeking Alpha article. I like Seeking Alpha for REITs, as I've already touched on. Uh, they described it as a stellar opportunity with strong upside, more or less how I feel as well, basically. Um, what more can I say? <laughs> so I won't say anything more. Uh, next up, we've got Google here, specifically Class A. So you'll notice here I've got both Class A and Class C. 
Class C is what I average into. So you'll see here 100 pound, you know, averages into sort of once or twice a month. This here is more like um, block buys. So um, I have a much larger holding in this at the moment because, you know, an average in the 2200s, uh, which I'm very happy with. Um, here, the um, again, Seeking Alpha article was very prominent this week. Uh, they point out the fact it's only got a 19 forward PE. Uh, it's not exactly cheap, but again, I think it's, um, uh, as they point out, this is among the lowest it's ever traded for, you know, a significant amount of time, at least. Uh, and they reckon it's trading at 30% discount, which I would feel broadly in the same ballpark of actually as well. So a good a good read. And I think it kind of um, encourages people to look past a lot of the short term noise, both in terms of advertising and any regulatory breakup in terms of the ad tech. Uh, behind the business as well so that was reassuring <clears throat> i've already spoken a little bit about the um my new positions this week you can see here that i haven't gone all guns blazing in terms of the sizing uh, all of these are about half a percent in terms of portfolio and kingfisher you know 0.2 percent give or take um but the those are new positions uh, and etc so this is my complete breakdown at the moment um, I will look to update this and again take on board any feedback i've received but that's i think what i want to talk about right now if I, if anyone does have any questions, you know, about, I don't know, Microsoft or Red Row or, um, I don't know, Aviva, feel free to ask. And again, I'm, I'm an, I'm an open book basically, and I'll do my best to uh, answer. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching everyone. Sorry, this video is a bit late this week, but again, I've been a busy boy for the last few days. I've been the boss hog and good luck for your investing. Bye for now.